Uh, all right, everybody. Hey, you're listening to WFMU East Orange. WXHD Mount Hope Worldwide on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. My name is Tom Sharpling. I'm your host for the next three hours. Actually, for the next two hours and 44 minutes, I will be your host. 43 minutes, I'm sorry. Your host. Two hours and 43 minutes will be your host. I will be your host for the next two hours and 43 minutes. Actually, it's two hours and 44 minutes. I will be your host. For the next two hours and 44 minutes, I will be host. Actually, now it's two hours and 43 minutes. So, yes, I will be your host for the next two hours and 43 minutes. Is it 43? Let me just look at the clock here. 2, 17. Yes, it would be 43. I will be your host for the next two hours and 44 minutes. Did I just say two hours and 44 minutes? I meant to say two hours and 43 minutes. I will be your host for the next two hours and 43 minutes. Actually, the second hand just passed the 12, so now it is I will be your host for the next two hours and 42 minutes. I'll be your host for tonight. Wait, when the second hand passed the 12, that made it two hours and 43 minutes. So, yes, I will be your host for the next two hours and 43 minutes tonight. Here on the best show on WFMU. The phone number, 201-200-9368. And I'll have you know, tonight is Open Phone Tuesday. So everything that goes with that is to be expected here for the next two hours and 42 minutes on the program. Out of a possible three hours, that is. The show is not two hours and 42 minutes long, mind you. It's a three-hour program. 201-200-9368 201-200-9368 is the number. The email address for the show, Tom S at WFMU.org. You writes the email, I reads the email. It's that simple. Directly, instantaneously, boom. Shows up right on the screen I'm looking at right now. It's that basic. We are wired here tonight. Wired. Hey, a couple things. First of all, I want to thank who I, I forgot to thank last uh, last week due to the uh, nature of uh, what was going on in terms of the uh, the crazy uh, the crazy show that was Teenage Girl Night. I forgot to thank the person who filled in for me the preceding week, which was uh, Eva. So thank you, Eva, for filling in. I appreciate that. Coming through in my hour of need. And I also want to thank everyone who listened to Teenage Girl Night, which uh, which I think uh, I know Glenn Jones is now the official... Uh, Guinness World Record Holder for the longest radio program by an individual. But I should win some sort of merit award for for some sort of endurance thing for the show. Look, I loved the Teenage Girl Night. I thought it was a big party and a lot of fun. I, I appreciate the uh, parents for bringing the girls down, uh, Kate 1, Kate 2, and Nadia. I appreciate the parents for bringing them down, and uh, I appreciate the girls for coming down, but it's, uh, I was exhausted after that show. Winded. Oh, holy moly. So tonight I say, in respect to those who were not the world's biggest fans of Teenage Girl Night, and there were a few of you. While many people enjoyed it, I enjoyed it, many people did enjoy it, there were a few who were not were not completely in love with it. So you know what? Tonight we do Grown Up Night on the best show on WFMU. It's Grown Up Night. I want to talk to some grown-ups. Come on, grown-ups, call me. 201 Hey, the music that we heard 
Let's back announce that before we forget. And by we, I mean me. So I'm talking in the... Is that the third person that I'm talking in when I say we in regard to myself? Is that right, Dave? Uh, no. First person plural. It's first person plural. So using the royal we is first person plural. So like when Phil Mushnick says in the uh, Daily and the Post... We were watching the Yankee game the other night, and uh, we were outraged by the fact that it ended at 12.35 at night. That would be, that's, that's first person plural. Correct? Yes, okay. What is third person? He, she, or his. Okay, so that's what I thought. So they... So the royal see this is learning for me cuz as you know I am I am a uh, I am of poor to little education I uh not the smartest person walking the face of the earth right now not me not that smart No we heard Vincent Gallo from his new album When Vincent Gallo you know he of Buffalo 66, he of Prince Vince, the rapper, he of Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Was he in Super Mario Brothers? I think he was in Super Mario Brothers. He of, uh, Palookaville, thank you, thank you. And by the way, I want to thank Dave, my, uh. My awesome, uh, I won't call you a call screener because you're more than that. How's, how's associate? That's a, that Dave gives the thumbs up. My associate Dave and amongst his uh, duties, call screening happens to be just one of them. But anyway, Vincent Gallo has an album out on the Warp record label and we heard the song honey bunny from vincent gallo ah before that outrageous cherry from their new album out there in the dark on the pop tones record label we heard where do i go when you dream with a question mark so i guess it should be where do i go when you dream is that better? And thank you, Pop Tones, for uh, cranking out the records. Ah, oh, the Turtles checking in before that. From their album, Turtle Soup. Produced by Ray Davies, obviously. We heard House on the Hill. Reissued by the people at Rhino. And starting us off, Hypno Love Wheel from their uh, from their Altered States album, Model Railroad, on the Elias record label. I know it's Alias Records. I'm just pronouncing it the wrong way because I'm a jerk. From 1993. Oh, we got an email coming in here. Someone. Went to Thomas at WFMU.org and sent me an email. What's it say? Tom, you're okay, but the girls rock. Yours truly in Los Angeles, Mark. Gee, thanks, Mark. What a jerk. Not that you're a jerk. It, you're not a jerk, Mark. It's a jerky thing to say. Come on. you got to admit that's a jerky thing to say. You're okay. Hey, I'm going to write this email to tell this person that they're just okay. Th thanks for the C- minus rating, Mark. You know what I'm going to do right now? You have a website address on here, Mark. I'm going to review your website. Let's check it out. Okay. Oh, wow. He has stuff on the uh, Ian Anderson solo album. Oh, boy. 
boy, I, oh my God, I can't believe that uh, a tastemaker like that doesn't like this program. A uh, Jethro Tull uh, solo supporter isn't into the show? Oh no, what am I doing wrong? I gotta get these Ian Anderson fans on my side. How dare you? Oh, what else did Tommy want to talk about? Hey, did you see that, uh, that big rock concert at Madison Square Garden this, uh, past weekend? With, uh, all the superstars? And, uh, I saw I saw bits and pieces of it. I was flipping it on and off. I saw um, uh, I saw Paul McCartney with like this new like tough guy song, Freedom. It's like we will fight for the right to have our freedom. Who did who did he write the, who did he write it with the the. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 Sammy Hagar? Ah, Chris in Toronto checking in. He emailed Tom S at WFMU.org. Hey, Tom, I am hereby requesting you get some more exclusive interviews with real guests. Forget the teenage girls. I'm talking about the old days when you talked with guys like Rick Benson or Tony Torgvort. Well, I'll try to line some more interviews up. We'll see what uh, what happens. I know we have a couple things in the pipeline. A uh, we're working on a Nostradamus show, which should be exciting. And then there's the uh, old-fashioned variety show, which uh, oh, I'd love to. I'd love to do that next week. I wonder if I can get that together for next week. This old-fashioned. I'm going to host a variety show where I sing and I do sketches and. Uh, It'll be like the uh, Wayne Brady show, but it'll be with me instead of Wayne Brady. Hey, did a tree hit the phones or something? Did it, 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 uh, are the phones completely gone? What? Well, I guess if the email's working for people. I want to talk to the teenage girls. That's what I want to talk to. Oh, here's Mark emailing me. Okay, listen to this. Tom, I love the show, and I'll send you the CD. He's going to send me the Ian Anderson CD so you can make an educated statement. Well, I appreciate that. I would be willing to listen to this Ian Anderson CD, Mark. Thank you for your, uh, thank you for conducting yourself like an adult, Mark. Because that's what tonight is. Tonight's grown-ups only. No teens allowed, except for the three principal teens who were involved in teen night and any other teen who might call. Or anyone who picked up the phone, for that matter. But you know what? I shan't beg for your phone calls. I don't need... I'm not going to stoop to your level. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... I'm going to read from the Vanity Fair music issue, which is something I uh, I brought this into. I uh, wanted to read something from this. Beck has his, uh, in the new Vanity Fair, which has, uh, it's the music issue. So on the cover of this music issue, it says, a 375-page all-access pass, which right there you should be running for cover when anybody uses, like, like these these code words like you're getting something special all access pass like oh 
Oh, thank God, buying this issue of Vanity Fair got me in behind the scenes. Anyway, it's a 375-page all-access pass to the stars of rock, pop, hip-hop, folk, country, classical, bebop, and punk. So right there, that's the other, that's the other uh, felony that they've committed by using, like, kind of the ABBA to Zappa thing where it's like, we're going to just name every kind of music ever, and we encompass all of it. From Beck, to, from Beck and Brandy to Tony Bennett. See, there's the ABBA to Zappa thing right there with the bees. They went with the bees this time. From Beck and Brandy to Tony Bennett, Little Bow Wow in the Brill Building. And then in parentheses, <laughs> that's just the bees. Holy moly, if that's just the B's, what do they do for the letter Q? We have from Quiet Riot to Queensryche to Status Quo. And that's just the Q's and Quincy Jones. So it's one of these classic Vanity Fair uh, pullout covers. And they have uh, Jewel. Is where they get all the people, they get a dozen people to be in the room at the same time. And it's this photo, uh, you know, Vanity Fair always lists the day that the photo was taken. Like, that should mean anything to anyone. Hey, let me see if I can look into the issue past the 80 pages of ads that starts every issue of Vanity Fair to see if I can find the day that the photo was taken. See, grown-ups read Vanity Fair. That's why I'm, uh... Where is it? And if anybody has the, uh... The music issue of Vanity Fair, get it out. We'll read it together. Oh, here it is. The photo was taken on, uh... I just saw it. July 26th, 2001, in New York City. So on the cover, this pull-out cover we have jewel beck beyonce knowles from uh destiny's child david bowie Joni mitchell stevie wonder maxwell emmy lou harris is that Emmy Lou Harris? Yes, Emmy Lou Harris. Gwen Stefani from No Doubt. Jay Z. Missy Misdemeanor Elliot. And Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell? How, what was he? This is what I want to know about Chris Cornell being on the cover of this thing. Who, who, uh, which one of the art? Which like does is does Beyonce Knowles or uh, Beck's publicist or manager also represent Chris Cornell? Or is Chris Corn was Chris Cornell like working on the photo shoot that day as like a uh, like a photographer's assistant or something? And then they're like, "Hey, why, why don't you hop in the photo, Chris?" And in this issue of Vanity Fair, because it's Vanity Fair's take on music, which just horrifies me to think when uh, when I read Vanity Fair and it's a subject I don't know anything about, and I read an article about it, and it's like, uh, and when I read the article, it's like, oh, I didn't know anything about that. Now I know about it. That's interesting. I wonder if the things that I thought I was learning about are as inaccurate as their take on music appears to be. Holy moly. Christopher, uh, James Walcott wrote this uh, article on Elvis, which is just the, uh, some of the worst, the worst writing. It's like the guy, the guy doesn't know, he obviously doesn't know anything about Elvis other than like a third hand 
cultural icon thing of, of just kind of laughing about uh, him as a fat guy. Then there's a, a pity piece in here on the uh, sons and daughters of famous rock stars, which... Uh, yeah, I feel sorry for uh, Elijah Blue, the uh, son of uh, Greg Allman and Cher. Actually, I do feel sorry for him. Oh, could you imagine that? And then Beck has his uh, 50 greatest album covers. They uh, they got Beck on board to uh, to pick his 50 greatest album covers. And uh, it's good to see he's forgotten uh, entirely about the phenomenon known as independent music with these jackets. Come on, Beck. You couldn't get the cover of Slip It In in there? Huh? You couldn't get Zen Arcade on there? What a dink. Ah! An email from Mark. Mark fighting back, he says. I have a few mature rock artists on the label. Ian Hunter, Ian Anderson, Jethro Tull, Credence Clearwater... Do you think these folks should still be working? Ringo is now my favorite Beatle. You know what I say? If they have something to offer, they should be working. Absolutely. You take it on a case-by-case -case basis. And this guy Mike just emailed and said, Hey, Tom, can you please play some John Prine? What? To show your audience what they are missing, if they don't know about him already. John Prine? I'm not playing John Prine. And then we got Bronwyn emailing in. Please don't make fun of your onanistic shut-in listeners. Oh, I'll make fun of whoever I want. Anyway, this guy, you know, the guy with the Jethro Tull thing is not a shut-in, actually, Bronwyn. I'm sorry to clarify. He has, he's running a record label. Aimed at onanistic shut-ins. Onanistic. Excuse me for slaughtering the English language. This issue of Vanity Fair, this stinks. Their take on music. These jerks. What else is in this that was driving me nuts? Oh, they're, they also have this great uh, kind of tribute where they each have a photo of, of each uh, classic artist. Annie DeFranco. And they give each person like a, a title. So it's like, uh, it's like, uh, Little Bow Wow, the kid. Leonard Cohen, the bard. Annie DeFranco, the righteous babe. Weezer, the misfits. Jimmy Buffett, the beachcomber, and it's a picture of him on the beach. They should have had a picture of Jimmy Buffett getting tossed out of that Miami Heat game. That's the only good thing Jimmy Buffett ever did, was get thrown out of a basketball game. Oh, parrot heads. Oh, if we could, if we could pass a law against parrot heads, who wouldn't sign off on that? If in this upcoming election there was some, uh, if there was some, uh, you know, some sort of, uh, the, what do you call it there, that you vote on with the thing, the, the, 
what do you call it, Dave? Referendum. referendum. Thank you. If there was some sort of referendum that we could vote on to uh, have parrot heads like uh, just kind of, we should be acting with these parrot heads the way a lot of people are acting with uh, with uh, Arab citizens now. We should just be judging them first. I am against judging uh, Arab uh, Americans or Arab people before, uh, you know, I'm obviously for not discriminating against them. I am for discriminating against parrot heads, though. If, like, I was a cop and uh, I pulled someone over and they had, like, a, uh, and they had, like, some Jimmy Buffett bumper sticker said, like, uh, you know, like, changes in attitude, changes in latitudes, or whatever the name of that, or cheeseburger and paradise, I would take them from the car and I would just beat them literally within an inch of their life out on the street and this this referendum that I am proposing at this late date would allow that to be law Jimmy Buffett let's see here here's what they write about Jimmy Buffett in Vanity Fair Jimmy Buffett the beachcomber singer songwriter author Sunbaked CEO, 32 albums, seven of them platinum, one musical. Musical? Oh, five books. Books? Oh, oh, that's right. He writes these books. A pirate at 50. A pirate. Get bent, Buffett. From his easy comportment to his unpretentious song titles. Like, why don't we get drunk in Cheeseburger in Paradise? Buffett is the patron saint of kicking back. And kicking back is capitalized, by the way. Capital K, capital B. His heroes and listeners are often one and the same. Guys too charming for a woman not to love. Too drunk to be kept around. But the fans aren't all florid 55-year-olds in flip-flops. This is the kind of guy, it's like... Did he do the soundtrack for the movie Tin Cup? If he didn't, he should have. Because it's that kind of movie. It's like that kind of mood about just like, hey, I'm just the cool dude who's older, but I'm... I hate Jimmy Buffett. After 30 years of performing, Buffett also draws crowds of thousands of college dudes who are totally psyched. What's with the writing here? This is like this is like somebody's grandfather, just like going to some hip lingo web page and like in and like just pulling phrases that he's gonna just work into something that he's writing to sound like a cool dude talking. Thousands of college dudes who are totally psyched to wear hula skirts and parrot headdresses, all in the name of reaching the Margaritaville state of mind. Beneath the sunny mellowness, however, Buffett, who divides his time between Palm Beach and Sag Harbor, has quietly built himself a media empire. He is the author of a novel, a short story collection, an autobiography, and two children's books, making him, oh, making him one of six writers. Alongside Steinbeck, Hemingway, and Styron, to have reached number one on both the fiction and non-fiction bestseller lists. He's even collaborated on a musical with Herman Woke, of all people. He owns four Margaritaville restaurant club stores, restaurant slash club slash stores in the U.S., and two in Jamaica. Perhaps that's why his distant cousin Warren Buffett, okay, that explains a lot, has remarked, that it's he who should be seeking business advice from Jimmy and not the other way around. This is my chat. If, if you are a parrot head and you're listening to the show, I want to hear from you right now. It's still open phone Tuesday. But tonight, we declare war on Jimmy Buffett. 201 200 9368. Or if you know of a parrot head that just drives you nuts, now's the time. That we will take back the night against these horrifying, 
horrifying musicians. What, is everybody watching Undeclared? Is that what everybody's doing? Is everybody watching Undeclared? We got some emails coming in here. Uh, Jill and Drew uh, requesting Hocus Pocus by Focus. No, I don't think I'm going to play that. Mark saying burn the Vanity Fair. An email from... Uh, let's see. I, I can't believe that magazine even lists Annie DeFranco. She sucks big time. When you're done with it, please rip it up over the airwaves. Hey, listen to this for a minute. Just one second. Sorry about that. It just uh, spilled my sodi all over the floor. Got to clean that up. Oh, I'm clumsy. Hey, who likes rock music? Here's something from Fireballs of Freedom on WFM. <laughs> Actually, we can do a better job at that... Uh, we try to do a pro uh, front announce on this. Hey, who likes rock music? Well, here's something from Fireballs of Freedom on WFMU. Hey, 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 it's 9 p.m. here on the best show on WFMU. My name is Tom Sharpling, your host, taking you through till 11 when it's nickel and dime radio. But filling in tonight for a small change will be Jeffrey stepping in and doing his thing behind the microphone. I don't know if he's going to work the wheels of steel the way that uh, small Chizange does, but... Uh, You'll have to tune in at 11 to find out. Hey, we just heard from the Dirt Bombs. From their album Ultra Glide in Black, we just heard Got to Give It Up. And you know, that's the first time I've ever played the Dirt Bombs. I guess I waited till everybody was done with the record, and then I sneakily found my way to it. And now I have played it. I'm impressed. Aren't I impressive for having done that? Isn't that just so interesting? So scary interesting. Hey, the nerves before that checking in from their World of Gold album on the Thrill Jockey label out of Chicago. Ten Feet Tall, the name of that song. I was hoping it was a cover of the XTC hit. But it wasn't. Ah, the briefs checking in from their album Hit After Hit. On the Dirt Nap label, we heard Poor and Weird. A song I feels like I know that song inside and out. I've been hearing, uh, hearing it all over the place on the radio. On the stereo, on the uh, old Victroli. 
Everywhere I turns, it plays. Let me try something. Hold on a minute, folks. And starting us off, the Fireballs of Freedom from their album, Welcome to the Octagon. We heard Frying Up, and that's on the Estrus record label. Out of Bellingham, Washington. Ah, uh, the phone number, 201-200-9368. It is Open Phone Tuesday, and welcome, everyone who has just finished watching Undeclared. If I can just have a moment of your time between Dark Angel and, uh, why couldn't I be on against According to Jim? Why is that not, uh, the show that I'm up against, where it's like, hey, People are at home. Should I watch According to Jim or should I listen to uh, Best Show on WFMU? According to Jim, Best Show. According to Jim, Best Show. Uh, should I watch According to Jim or listen to the Best Show? Which one should I? No, of course I don't have that luxury. But you know what? That's, that's part of being the best, though. You go up against the best. It's the only way you know you're the best. Just like Michael Jordan will find out that he is not the best. In this season, when he goes up against the best, he will be reminded that, yes, sir, you are not the best anymore. I am the best. And who is that I that she'll be speaking? That's right. It's none other than the Orlando Magic's Tracy McGrady. Who will win MVP this year? Mark my words. Tracy McGrady, MVP. If you can bet on it, bet on it. Sports. Oh, you know what that brings to mind? Uh, I had a little wager with a friend of mine that uh, he said, your audience doesn't know video games from nothing. And I said, of course they do, you boob. And he said, nah, your audience don't know nothing. And I was like, Sure they do. He said, well, they don't know video games. And I was like, uh, yes, they do. He said, eh, they don't know video games from nothing. And I said, I said, oh, yeah, how, how should we settle this, uh, this bet? Perhaps, perhaps with a, I said perhaps actually at the moment, which I don't even know if that's the correct thing to say. Is that, can I say perhaps, Dave? He gives me the shrug of, of not knowing, so. Maybe I should ask Graydon Carter, Vanity Fair's editor, see what he thinks. So I said, perhaps we should settle this disagreement with a bet, my friend. And he said, eh, you don't know nothing. And I said, uh, please stop saying nothing like that. And he said, eh, I'll say whatever I want. Then I said, please don't even say eh like that either. That's just as bad as... And then uh, he stopped. And then the bet that we decided was if my audience can name the best tennis game that would be uh, for PlayStation, then I will win the bet. So if you know what is the best game for tennis, like if you want to play tennis, not Pong, but tennis, like actually like simulating the court and showing the guys like running around hitting the, the ball. What is the best tennis video game for PlayStation? And if my audience can come up with it by 11, I will win the bet. And the bet was for $850,000. So I'll win that bet. If I lose the bet, I will have to be an indentured servant for the next 45 years of my life. So please, come through for me. 201-200-9368 is the number. It's Open Phone Tuesdays here on The Best Show on WFMU. Hey, the email's been going crazy. We got an email from WFMU's own Glenn Jones checking in saying, Dear Tom, please make more fun of your shut-in listeners. Hell, please make more fun of all listeners. DJs too, for that matter. Love, Glenn. I might just do that. I will make fun of my listeners and fellow DJs alike. 
Who else checked in here? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Someone checking in saying, pardon my French, but what the hell is a parrot head? Well, my friend, a parrot head is uh, a parrot head is a uh, Jimmy Buffett fan. That's a parrot head. People who uh, who are huge Jimmy Buffett fans. Another email here was uh, of interest. Tom, a humble friend of a humble thought reporting for duty, which is friends of Tom. By the way, if you want to be a friend of Tom, F O T, which is our fan club, you should uh, email me at Thomas at WFMU.org. That's Tom S. T O M S at WFMU.org. And you will be a member of the fan club. We're working on the cards. We actually, uh, and I'm using the first person plural of we when I say that. I went and looked at uh, membership cards, which I think we picked out the right uh, pattern. So the cards are going to be coming together in the next couple of weeks. There's going to be a, uh, a website, which uh, there were some dramatic advancements in that in the last week. So... If you email me and say, I want to be a friend of Tom, you will be put on the uh, the list that it's, that it's coming together, the club, slowly but surely. So anyway, uh, Jack checking in, Jack the Armenian, saying, Tom, a humble thought reporting for duty. In light of the recent DVD release of the Godfather trilogy, I was wondering what your opinion is of those movies. Well, my opinion, I, well, I like the Godfather movies a lot. I like the first one, and I like the second one, and the third one's not that good. But you know what, with the third one, you know what gets me, uh, I guess it raises my hackles, if I, uh, or used to raise my hackles until I had them uh, removed. I actually had a hackle uh, problem, which I'm not going to burden you with my hackle uh surgery now on the air but i had my hackles removed about a year and a half ago and uh when they used to get raised though it would be over something like godfather 3 where everybody gets all over sophia coppola it's like oh my god she's so horrible he put his own daughter in the movie and she can't act it's like you know what yeah she was she wasn't so hot but you know what the true crime in Godfather 3 is George Hamilton. What's he doing in it? How'd he slip under the radar? You go from, uh, what's his face there? Uh, the Tom uh, Hagen, uh, uh, what's his name there? Robert Duvall. You go from Robert Duvall to, to, uh, George Hamilton? It's almost like what? If you couldn't get George Hamilton, who would they have gotten after that? Who would they have? Mike from Mike and Maddie? Is that who they would have gotten? To step in for if uh, casting? Is that the way that casting was going? If you cast George Hamilton? Who would you put in there? Chuck Berry? Robbie Knievel? Who would it have? It, could, it, seems like it, it seems like they almost spun a wheel. To end up with George Hamilton. I mean, did did uh, Coppola just throw a dart at a uh, at a dartboard with with a, a, a wall covered with thousands of celebrities' names on them, and it just ended up with uh, George Hamilton? And he was just like, "Well, I guess we can make that happen, George Hamilton." So that's my opinion of the Godfather trilogy. The phone number is 201-200-9368. It is Open Phone Tuesday, so feel free to call. WFMU, you're on the air. Hello, Tom. Hello. How are you this evening? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm back. Who is this? This is Roger Tamblin. Oh, oh hey, Roger. Uh, you are a, 
a promoter, right? I'm a you promoter, were the promoter. Yes. You called us a few weeks ago. I'm a ago. promoter, a manager. I, I, uh, I'm a, you know, I'm just a, I'm a jack of all trades in the, in the talent business. Okay. Well, I, um, uh, I just I got back from a West Coast tour. As you remember from my call before, I've been having some problems. Yeah. The last time you called, you, uh, you were having trouble getting guarantees for some of the bills you were putting together? That's correct. I was having trouble getting, you know, some, some bookers and talent buyers to agree to some of the guarantees on my package tours. And as such, I've had some falling outs with some of, some of my bands, and I'm no longer associated with that. The new Fast Automatic Daffodils. So you're well, not they a... are in spiral carpets. We are, no longer, we are no longer business partners. Those two bands plus a few others. They are no longer working with Jack, uh, with Roger Tamblin. That's correct. Roger Tamblin Entertainment. Yes, that's correct. However, though, it's, it just opened the door up for some more, more just, just incredible talents to come my way. Okay, like who, who are you working with Well, I went to now, the West Roger. Coast, you know, uh -huh. and I picked up, uh, you know, I picked up some, some talent there. I signed on some, some bands. Okay. And I will be putting together a package tour that these are these are some bands that I think just this is what the people need right now. This is the the now sound. Like what what like Concrete Blonde and Drama Rama. Really? Yes. So you're They're back. Drama Rama are back and Concrete Blonde are back? Yes. Wow. And I'm adding on Grant Lee Buffalo. Really? Yes. Wow. So, so these are... That's, uh, a, that's a three-band package tour that's going to be sweeping the nation. And what... You're what? going to get your entertainment dollar. Now You're going to get every, every cent of your $30 ticket. Now what? The $30 ticket? Yes. Well, that's a little... That's, is that a... I guess it, it, that seems a little steep for a bill like that, I, think I it's guess. it's totally worth it. Okay. I mean, totally I Totally worth it. Now, now, uh... Like what size places are are? Uh, it used to be a theater circuit, which is like how many seats generally? Oh, uh, I'm hoping at each show to get about say eight to ten thousand. Eight to ten thousand people for for that kind of. Well, yes, of see, course. Yeah, see again, that's not. Uh, I, I, I I have some bargaining chips too that I can throw in. For those bills. Yes, I do have some bargaining chips that I can throw in. Uh huh. What, what do the slam and watusis mean to you? Do you really want to know what they mean to me? Well, of course, I'm sure it'll be positive. See, it actually is not going to be so positive, so I'm going to hold my tongue on that. But uh. Well, if things start to drag, I'll be throwing them in, as well as the Hindu love gods. The Hindu love gods. Yes. Wow. So you actually—that's the. Uh, that was like a side project. Was that like a flesh tone side thing or something? Oh, well, I'm sorry. A what? The it was a side project of Johnny hates jazz, wasn't it? Johnny hates. Who are also under my management. So you represent Johnny hates jazz now. That's correct. Wow. So so now that I, I, it's going to be. There's a dollar to be made, and I'm going to make it. I, I, I guess that's an admirable thing. You know, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not criminal to try to make a living. But um, how are how are you? Uh, how 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 is uh, the response? Am I promoting it? These shows promote themselves. Do do they really though? I of mean, course. Is it, is it is it a matter of just? The word gets out. Is it like on the internet? The word gets or? out, and the word gets out quick. Like on the like on the internet, or I mean, I don't know how it happens these days, but it, it it's going to get out. But what is the the word is going to get out? It's just it's it's perplexing for me to think of what the fan base for like a a Johnny hates jazz might be now. Well, it's I I would say that the 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 two things the fan base is two things. Uh huh. People, people with money that I'm interested in, and people with excellent taste. Okay. I mean, I, say that's say I, one of my shows comes within a hundred miles of where you live. You're going to hear about it. If 
if uh, another another tour I've got going on, if Flesh for Lulu and the Hooters play within a hundred miles of your home, you're going to hear about it, and you're going to go. Now I'm going to hear about it. How? I don't know. These shows promote themselves. I mean, I just don't understand that concept because uh, promotion usually requires taking ads out and and. Uh... Oh, I've got my people handling all of that. Okay. So you have. I've people... got my charges handling that. Okay, so you've got people putting ads. That's correct. In magazines and. And on my drive out to the West Coast, I had an idea that is going to take the world by storm. Okay, and what what is that? I had an idea that is just. I I'm going to go down in the annals of history, of pop cultural history, for for thinking of this. Okay, I mean, going you, through with it. Are you willing to? How about uh, get ready? I have, okay. Are you oh, so you're going to share it with us? Yeah, okay. of course. Are you sitting down? Yes, I am. Okay. How about this? A multi-act, and I mean, ten to twenty acts in a day. A multi-act festival with a variety of acts of all different styles, all different musical styles, with with spoken word performances and also. Also, a tent where art films are shown. So, uh, so it's like a, like a multimedia. That's my yes. So a year, you. That's my idea. But the bands are going to be different styles. Of course, yes. Who? When was the last time you heard of something that brilliant? Well, I mean, it's it's been done before. I mean, it's. it's By who? Uh, I guess the most recent one would be like uh, like Lollapalooza. I guess is one of the most famous examples of that. Uh, you know, of having different styles of music and uh, different forms of media mm, in the same. I think uh, I've heard of it, but I don't think it's going to. I I don't think it's going to come close. Hold a candle to my festivals. So, like, who who my would festivals? Be... Just oh, well. I mean, is this a concrete thing now that you're doing? Uh, I'm putting it doing? together. So you, it's in the early right. stages? It's in the early stages. About uh, two separate festivals at this point. Okay. Like, say, uh, like headline is World Party. How does that sound <laughs> to you? Uh, uh, not so hot, actually. I'm not That's a, you know, they, not a big World Party fan. How about the Fatima Mansions? Headlining? Yes. How can a band like that with, headline? I mean, with, they didn't headline in their heyday. Well, these shows, okay, these festivals, it's going to be bands like World Party and Fatima Mansions, like back-to-back with bands like God Street Wine. Okay. And, and Tim Buck Three. Okay. And right. then on, an, on another stage will be some spoken word performances. I've almost already inked these deals with these spoken word performers. They have a lot to say. Like these, who? these performers have a lot to say. They will blow some minds. Like, have you ever heard of Elaine Boozler? Yeah, I mean, that's like a... Wait, you said a spoken word? Well, yes. I mean, that's not really spoken word, though. That's stand-up comedy. Well, she talks, and she's got some very topical things to say. I say it's oh. spoken word. Oh, well, who else is on your list? Steve Gutenberg. Steve Gutenberg, the, the actor? Well, I think he's been in some movies, yes. But he does, what, what does he do? He does, he does spoken word. Elaine Boosler and Steve Gutenberg and, and the fat guy from Not Necessarily the News will, Stu- be, will be in the spoken word tent on St- one of the festivals. Stuart Pankin? Yes, he was, he was in Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves. Yeah, he's yeah. He's excellent. So, wait, so those people are going to go up and do what? Between? Spoken word. Between bands? No, on a separate on stage. On a separate stage, okay. Yes. So there's a band stage. We've got, I've got some serious... I've got some... I've got some... <coughs> excuse me. I've got some some serious sponsors here. But, like who? I mean, I've got, some, I've got some people willing to put up some, some very serious money. I mean, I, I bought the rights to... Okay. Do you, do you remember uh, the, uh, from, a few, from like a few months ago... A very popular uh, ch- child's toy and animated, animated uh, you know entity uh, in conjunction with Taco Bell called Nacho and Dog. No, uh, I don't. don't. No. 
You don't remember Nacho and Dog? I, I really don't, no. no. They're the Taco oh. Bell child's meal. Okay, so no, they, Nacho... I, that's, that's the... That's the fe- for one thing, that's the festival mascot. So, I bought their rights off of eBay for $80. So Taco Bell is sponsoring the thing? No, Nacho and Dog are the mascots. So just Nacho and Dog. Right. Who are, who are what? Oh, they're, they're two animated little creatures. I bought I bought the rights to use them off of eBay. Now, is that a cartoon character? or is Well, this... they're kind of like a child's meal for Taco Bell. Okay. And they'll be the mascots for the... For the festival. Okay. And uh, I think that that will, that will help out excellent. That will help out amazingly. And and there will be a film. There'll be a uh, I'm sorry, a tent where art films are shown. Like what like, kind? Of... Like Blake Edwards, a fine mess. Well, that's not really an art film, though. Blake. Oh, I, I do disagree. And Shirley MacLaine's out on a limb. Blake, wait, the Blake Edwards one. That's the one with. Uh, is that the Ted Danson? Ted Danson, yes. And Howie Mandel, who were also showing how he's walk like a man. Again, these aren't these aren't really art. Oh uh, well, yeah, you know, it's just a matter of opinion. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've I also would... got some excellent hip hop lined up. L- like, uh, like, who? like, uh, have you ever heard of Kippa Dota? Again, again uh, is, that's more in the comedy field, isn't it? Uh... <laughs> Well, uh, obviously, you haven't heard "Life in the Slaw Lane." You know, I I have not heard it. No, but uh, it is a, it's a hip hop number that he does. Life in the slow lane. Life in the slaw lane, like what comes with your fried chicken, slaw. Oh, like coleslaw. Right, correct, or whatever you call it. So, so, and what is it? And so, another, and the, and also. Also, some more, a couple of more spoken word performances that will be on the second festival. It's all a bit of a mess right now, so do bear with me. So you're sorting this out still? Oh, well, of course, yes. But a couple of, uh, a couple of spoken word performers that, I, that I've, um, I'm so close to signing them on. Uh, one is Yakov Smirnov. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's uh, the Russian guy. Right. He's yeah. hilarious, and he's got some excellent things to say. And also, Father Guido Sarducci will be performing. But again, these are just and the sta- emergency broadcast network. You're you're not. I mean, are you familiar with with just comedy performers? I just know that they they my I'm transfixed on the act when they perform in front of me when I watch the videotapes. I I see. I would I would personally. I'm not going to get into. it. I would disagree with your definition of spoken word, but you know that's that's your. That's your thing, but it's a, you know I I think you might want to research. There's a little bit of Australian flavor going on too. At the show, at, at the, the festival, festivals. like what what uh. Jaco and Yahoo Serious will be performing. I I know who uh Yako, no no Yako Yahoo Serious is the guy from uh, Young Einstein and. That's correct. Now who who's Hilarious. the other guy? Who's the other guy? Jaco. Who is that? He's just a huge Australian pop cultural icon. He's just a, like a he's like a crocodile. He's like a Paul Hogan type, but much younger. Is he the is he the one from the uh, is he the one from the battery? Didn't he do battery commercials here or something? I, I believe think, so. Yes. He might have done like some like uh, Ever Ready or something. Yes, I believe so. So yeah, okay. Now I know who that is. Yeah, I. I uh, so that's interesting. So you got a little Australian flavor on the. That's uh, correct. Okay. That's what we need. I, a little I, Australian flavor, I think. Now, can can I ask you uh, a personal question? Oh, of course, yes. I I have nothing to hide. Okay. Um. I was just wondering, kind of, about your accent. You were wondering what about it? Where uh, where where is that accent <laughs> from, if you don't mind? A question I get a lot, Tom. Uh huh. Well, over the past fifteen years, I've lived in about three different places, and I think that my accent's a combination of these these three living these three areas that I've lived. Okay. Which is uh, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Okay. And London, and Ozark Mountains. So I think my uh, my accent's kind of a uh, I guess it's it's just kind of a little you know a little bit of the Ozarks combined with 
with a little bit of uh, French London. Canadian and a little bit British. Huh. I, I didn't notice. I, I mean, I uh, it, it didn't sound like a pure, you know, I mean, I could hear the British inflection. Right. The uh, the Ozark thing I wasn't as uh, as clear on. Oh, uh, that part seems to be very obvious to me. Okay, and, and you uh, you and now, I, though... I was spending some time in the Ozarks, actually. That's the last place that I lived. Uh-huh. Now, what, what took you to the Ozarks? Oh, just, I needed some, some R&R. &R. Uh-huh. Some fresh mountain air. So a break and from... And also, yes, I... I had been, uh, I had been, pro I've been promoting, and I still am promoting some bands that kind of, oh, they kind of, you know, ring up that, that, that feeling of being, being in the country, and uh, I, I wanted to get out there and just kind of, uh, you know, listen to, listen to just a lot of my All Good records. Have you ever heard All Good? They're excellent. Like, who, who is on All and Good? The String Cheese Incident. I've been listening to a lot of that roots music while I was living in the, in the hill country. That's not and exactly. also, that's where I ran into uh, my latest discovery. And what what is that? Vanilla hot box grits. Oh, okay. He he has uh, called the program before as well. Oh, he's he's excellent at promoting himself. I guess yes. he takes a page from uh, from the master, so to speak. He is. Uh, yes, yes, of course. He. He is a, uh, he's trained under Bela Fleck. He plays banjo guitar. Yeah, which is, uh... And he roadied for Mr. Fleck for years, and now he's, he's a, he's a, he's a very accomplished player. Which is, I guess the instrument is like a hybrid of a guitar and a banjo? That's correct. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. I, uh... I have him, I've, uh, I've signed him on for, uh -huh. a, you know, a management agreement. Okay, and where, where, and uh... I have him on some tours. I, he's... He's very special to me. He's going he's gonna to be huge. Huge. Where can, um, I mean, is there, are there any dates? Right or... now, uh, he's going to start touring with the Nutley Brass and Combustible Edison. Huh. Well, that, I think that's... his sound fits very well. I guess that's kind of an interesting uh, combination in, in the, the fact that it's, uh, well, I mean, that's, it's, I guess it's it's more of the idea of you putting things together that don't, necessarily right. relate to each other you know right and, but, i have him bouncing around you know it's it's i i treat him very well i mean i i think it's very good to groom your talent yeah very good treat your talent the best that you can well i think that's a good philosophy so uh so we can look forward to seeing uh him in this area perhaps yes actually he'll be performing on that tour up in your area okay if things go well <clears throat> then he'll be going up the up the west coast with over overwhelming color fast poi dog pound, pondering I'm sorry Dylan Fence and Downey Mildew. Wow! So you you uh, I'll gi I'll give you credit. You don't skimp on the uh, the quantity of bands. That's the one you definitely have the quantity qu equals quality. Yeah. See, I mean, I w I would you know respectfully disagree with that, but I guess I I, know, I can see what you mean. You know, but I, uh, I think quantity doesn't necessarily equal quality automatically, but, you know, that's, that's your call. Well, I, I, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with my tours. Oh, well, I, I look ready forward. For, I, I think another new thing is, is big guitars. What, what do you mean? Big guitars. You mean big guitar sounds? Yes. Like in, in, like big, who? Bigger, bigger than the earth, just huge guitars. I'm going to put together a tour with Tad, Monsterland, the God Bullies, Range Sanction, and Grotus. Wow, so that, to, that's like a guitar. It's going to rip the country open. So that's like a feast for guitar fans. Oh, yeah. It's, so, just, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's heaven for fans of intensity. Yeah, well, it sounds it. Um, wow! So, so you on some dates the Iowa Beef Experience will be opening. Wow! And they they were on uh, Com Three Records, I think, which was a label in Brooklyn. So, I guess the like Iowa that, Beef Experience. I believe so. So that that should be of interest to people in this area. Well, that's I think it'll be of interest to people in all areas. Okay, I look. I 
I look forward to hearing more about these shows. And, and please look uh, out for Vanilla Hot Box Grits. When he's in the area, please, by all means, let us know. I will. And uh, also, you know, I, I don't know. I, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to have as many problems with, with, these, uh, with these outings as I have with the other ones. I mean, what do you think, honestly? Of what? I mean, what I've presented to you tonight. I think the Bills, I think you're, I think you're kind of setting yourself up for the same trap that it seemed like you might have fallen into last time where you're, you're loading the Bills with bands that maybe have had their moment in the, the sun. I don't know. Have you heard of Electronica, Tom? Uh-huh. Sure. How about the future sound of London? I, I don't know who that is. Is that... You've never heard them. I don't believe so, no. You will hear them. Okay, I, I look forward to and the... You will, you will hear the Jack Officers. I know, I know who that is, yeah, and that's not... Uh, again, I think that's something that has... That's, their moment was uh, has passed them. Have you heard the new Butthole Surfers album? It's excellent. Yes, I thought it was actually pretty pretty uh, unspectacular. Oh, it's, it's incredible. Well... I guess again we can we can uh, agree to disagree. Well, you know, I don't know, but look out look out for my people, Tom. Okay. Next time you hear, you know, like uh, next time you hear that maybe say fifty miles away, the Gigolo Ants and the Jody Grind and the Kill Kenny Cats are playing. I want I want you there. Okay. Well, you let me know and I'll be there. I want you there. I'll call you and let you know and let all of your listeners know. Let me know when they're going to be there. I, I'll definitely. Uh, Make it a point to try to show up. I will. Great. Well, uh, Mr. Tamblin, I appreciate you checking in and keeping us uh, it abreast. It is no problem. Well, thank it you. It is no problem. And Expect good... to hear from me in the future. I, I will. All over. I, I definitely will. On all forms of media. I look forward to it, Mr. Tamblin. Bye-bye, Tom. Thank you, Roger Tamblin. Okay. It's uh, Roger Tamblin, the uh, famous promoter, checking in. The phone number, 201-200-9368. It, uh, as that call, uh, attests. That, that call attests to the fact that it is Open Phone Tuesday and everyone is welcome to, uh, to give us a ringle. Let's keep track. So far, I've, uh, gotten in an argument with somebody about, uh, Ian Anderson on the, uh, uh an internet argument. We uh, we read all about Jimmy Buffett. Uh, we heard from Roger Tamblin, who's uh, the scary rock promoter, who seems vaguely delusional about the uh, quality of the bands that he's promoting, or the popularity, or both. We got an answering machine uh, message. Somebody thinking they were leaving an answering machine message on our line. Uh, I just got an email here from Steve saying, Hey, Tom, thanks for reminding us that Undeclared was on. My wife and I always forget. Oh, boy, I'm glad I reminded you there. By the way, when are you going to do your audience a real service and present the Blue Oyster Cult in-depth analysis that needs to be done. Soon, maybe. Anthony emailing and saying, uh, I guess this is in reference to uh, Roger Tamblin. He says, what the blank, and the word I'm blanking out is the F-bomb. Is wrong with this guy? World Party, Timbuk Three, Nacho and Dog. Hold on one second, folks. Uh, 
on me and my sody. Butterfingers tonight. Butterfingers. Oh. The phone number, 201-200-9368. It was supposed to be adult night tonight. Since we had teenage girl night last week. So it's to be adults only. So if you're an adult, it is your night to shine. Although I must say, the fact that I turned the airwaves over to my teenage friends last week. And now none of them have called in. I feel kind of used, I have to admit. I was used by the teenagers. The teenage girls came in here, did their show, and now I'm just I'm just like so much trash in the garbage can. Not needed, not wanted. How dare you? Teens. Oh, the other thing we were talking about is if you know a parrot head or are a parrot head, we want to talk to you. Because I'm passing a referendum saying that parrot heads, police should have the right to beat parrot heads at any, uh, at their discretion. WFMU, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Ah, oh, not a lot. How are you tonight? Uh, been better. Who um, is it? What's your name, sir? My name is Anthony. Anthony, how are you tonight? Oh, uh, okay. I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, lately, I've been noticing in the press and on the internet mm -hmm. that everyone's going crazy over the strokes. Uh huh. Um, I don't get it. Did you hear the record? Yeah. Did you it's, like it? No. It sounds very. To me, it sounds. I don't know. It's it's carbon copy. And what is what is it a carbon copy of? Uh, I don't like it. Just everything reminds me of something that's been done and I completely don't get why everyone's going so nuts over them uh -huh. I would like you to explain this to me because I just don't well I just don't get it. well you know we have one of the the guy one of the guys from the strokes calls in once in a while uh -huh. and uh, requests records which is kind of interesting but I'll explain I'll say I'm not a huge fan by any stretch but uh I think it's because they're they're playing uh, rock music. They're a rock band, right? Yeah. Playing rock music, right? Uh huh. And they've got like ten good songs. Uh huh. And they're evocative of other things that were good. Uh huh. Right? Yeah, but see, that's the thing. They're doing things that other people have done, and that's what blows my mind. Yeah, but who's who's not doing that? That's true. I mean, that's true to a point. But the thing is, these guys sound I mean, exactly who... like like uh. What's that song? New York City Cops that they're making a big fuss about after uh -huh. the World Trade disaster. Yeah. It sounds like a door song to me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I just... I, I, stuff like that makes me disappointed. There's no hope for the music industry whatsoever. Well, who? what is something lately that you've enjoyed, though? What's like... <sighs> uh, Godspeed, you Black Emperor. Okay. But that's... I don't know. That's a little bit too complicated for some people, I think. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh I don't know, really. Nothing, really. To tell you the truth. Besides that, what's the last? So you don't. What is the last good album you bought? Last good album I bought. Hmm. Hmm. That's a hard one. <laughs> that really is a hard one. I haven't really found anything very interesting lately. You know, you might. I'm going to play a band called Oneida. Oh, actually, Clinic stuff. Clinic. Well, there you go. See, Clinic has been pretty interesting. Yeah, but you know what, though? I mean, you could make a case at the Clinic or just uh That's true. Just but a reheated 13th floor elevators run, you know, with uh, like a, a British opaque quality to them. Well, I can understand why people dig them. Yeah. But it just, I don't, I don't know. I don't get the strokes at all. I've, I've heard, Ju I think it's Julian who's called in. Uh-huh. And, uh, I don't know. He seems kind of, uh, he seems kind of stuffy, I guess, when yeah. he calls in. Well, you know, I mean, it's they're also young and handsome, right? <laughs> that's true. And that's, I have to give you that. That is uh, a factor, right? Yeah. I mean, but that's a factor with a lot of things in the entertainment world. 
Uh, I don't know. It just blows my mind. Uh, you know what? I, I don't think you can get too carried away with it. You know, it's like you just don't listen to hype stuff like that. Then, you know, it's like you just try to listen to it. as It's not a half bad record. You know, you know, but it's uh, it's it's just you can't. It's not the. It's not going to change the world. No, no. But the thing is, and anybody who's trying to tell you that, it probably has an agenda. You know, where they're making a living off of the Strokes, or they're making a living off selling magazines that have hype things in them. So you know, you just you take it for. You, you got to consider the source. That's true. Um, I don't know. It's just like I said. It's it's you know not anything to go crazy about, but it's mm. just I don't get it because it's. Everyone's just, it just seems like everyone just loves them. Yeah. Well, and it's you know. kind of disappointing. It's like, oh, come on, you know, pick something better to be crazy about. Uh-huh. So, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's kind of disappointing. So that's what people are digging these days. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I appreciate you, uh, you weighing in. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank well, you. Thanks a lot. I'm going to go listen to my Britney Spear records now. I'll talk to you later. All right. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye. Britney Spears records. It's Britney Spears, guy. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. Hey. How's it going? All right. Who's this? It's Kate One. How are you, Kate One? Horrible. Why? Ugh, I had a bad day at school. A bad day at school? Yeah. Why? What happened? I had to run a mile in gym class. Uh-huh. Oh, a whole mile. Miles oh. Hey, did you have fun doing the radio show last week? Tons of fun. See, I tons of... I sent you a... Well, Kate, too. Uh-huh. Her mother, like... I, I can't give away the secret. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But she made something for you. Really? She's going to send it. Oh, my. Along with a thank you letter that I wrote. <sighs> when, when, when can I look for this? Um. Soon? Soon. All right. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for the thank you letter. Did your mother hear the show? Uh, <laughs> a little bit of it. Was, was she happy with it? Yeah. Good. Uh, Good. Uh, what, how do you feel about my ban on teens now? Well, you didn't ban teens. You said it was grown-up night, but then you said we could call in. I said you could call in, though, because I needed to get the post-teen wrap-up. Uh, okay. All right. Well, Kate One, thank you for calling. I appreciate it. And say hi to uh, your mother. Say hi to Kate Two. Okay. And uh, her parents. And uh, so, how did you like sharing the um, the uh, studio with your uh, two uh, co-hosts? Mm, not really much for sharing. You wanted it to be just you, right? Yeah, just me. Well. <laughs> There's another day for that. Who knows? Yeah, All right, Kate One. I appreciate you calling. Okay. And uh, thanks for coming down last week. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. The phone number 201-200-9368. Open phone Tuesday continues. WFMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. Hey. I, um, you mentioned at the beginning of the program about Tracy McGrady. Uh huh. I don't think he's going to win the MVP. Who's going to win the MVP? Michael Jordan, and I tell you why. Oh, stop it! Because of popularity. Well, now that's not who votes on the MVP. It's who not. Votes? It's not the fans. No, I know, but the writers are in love with him, and they're going to give it to him just because he's Michael Jordan. Not the no, anything. they're not. Yes, they are. You know nothing, and uh, I know everything. The, the team, Say that. Repeat after me. I know nothing. I know something. No, say I know nothing. I know nothing. Tom knows everything. And uh, or about the teen say, night. No, say Tom knows everything. Tom knows everything. About the teen night. Say it together, though. Well, we got to say it together. Uh, All right. One two, one, two, three. One, two, three. Tom knows everything, and I know nothing. How's that? That's good. All right. About say teen... it with a little more conviction, though. Well, let me tell you about teen night. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, they kind of use you, man. Like, you know, you let them on your show, and they, they had a good time and everything, and then they just, I don't know, they kind of discarded you. And you even protected them. You, one weirdo called up about an apartment or something, and you're like, no, 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 I'm like your guardian tonight. I don't know. Why, why did, it's like that movie, you know, Wild in the Streets. 
Uh-huh. Like the young people just take over the world. I don't know, man. You it's think like, that's what it was like? Well, sort of. I mean, I think they're trying to take over the station. I think they're trying to start with you. Well, you know. Because you gave them the opportunity. And, you know, you were generous, and then they just, I don't know. So do you think that's indicative of today's youth? Um, I don't really know too many of today's youth, but it might very well be. I mean, you gave them, I mean, how many kids can say they're on the, on the, on the radio? And they, you know, and they were having fun at your, you know, at your behest. That is true. And I don't, which is okay, but then they just kind of like, you were like a fourth banana that night. And I don't know, you, you were trying to, you were trying to be the good guy. Hey, wait a minute. I recognize this voice. You know, the same guy who said that they ruled last week and that I should get out of the way. I did. Yes, you did. No. How dare you do call up and now all of a sudden you're trying to have it every which way. I'm, I changed you my... You fraud. I, you're good. I you're did, a fraud. No, no, I, I Oh, admit, you're a fraud. I admit. it. I've just unmasked week, you. But I changed my mind. I've unmasked you. I changed my mind. You changed your I mind. Did. How no, dare I'm on you. your side now. Of course you are, because they're not here now. No, no, there's no reason you're not talking not so true. tough. Because you hit me. Get off my phone. That's what I say to you. How dare you come in here on my show, into my house. Switch allegiances right in front of me. You lowlife. Allegedly. 201-200-9368, the number. It is Open Phone Tuesday. The email address, by the way, thomas at wfmu.org. If you want to become a friend of Tom, you've got to email me, thomas at wfmu.org, and say, make me a friend of Tom, or I want to be a friend of Tom, or sign me up for the Friends of Tom. Oh, there's exciting stuff. There's websites and membership cards, and it's coming together. I know it's been a uh, wait. People maybe think I haven't delivered yet, but don't worry. Oh, you'll see. Let's check the email here. Somebody emailing in saying, Death to false metal. Play some mana war. No. Somebody wants to hear the replacements. No. And then somebody emailing in, Julie emailing in, saying, As the owner of a parrot head, I find your comments offensive to avian Americans. And sends a uh, picture, Julie sending a picture of her pet parrot, which is uh, a very cute parrot. I'm not going after parrots. You know it. I think it's an insult. I think these Jimmy Buffett fans are in an insult to parrots and parrot owners. You should be more outraged than I am. FMU, you're on the air. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. I got a, uh, I got a little issue or whatever. Last week I read in the paper that... An um, issue of what? About a judge who was caught in a prostitution ring. Uh-huh. And it seems like... Where, where is this? Where did this take place? This is in, I think, North Plainfield. Okay. And not that I'm against prostitution or whatever, but here's a guy who was judging people and putting people away. Uh -huh. And he gets caught up into the whole thing. And it's just... It's this whole... I don't know what the word I'm looking for. But Hypocrisy. Yeah, that's, that's the word. And it turns you off. It does. And it's okay for him to do it. And he got away with a slap on the wrist because he's Cause he he ruled. a retired judge. And now he gets away with it when the average Joe slob... Would be in jail right now. Yeah. And he would have sentenced them. Exactly. Oh, I'm sick now. You're getting me sick. It's, it's like hard. injustice for all. You're out of order. <laughs> this whole courtroom's out of order. Well, I just thought I'd bring that to your attention so it can get into the courtroom of your airwaves. 
So you're outraged at this? Ciao, baby. Hey, wait, I'm not the... Ah, hang up on me. I'm not done. Colleen emailing in from uh, Canada, wondering if Canadian girls can be friends of Tom. Yes, they can. Everyone can be a friend of Tom. Canadian girls, Canadian guys, American girls, American guys, everybody. So easy, it's not funny. WFMU is the station. Tom S at WFMU.org is the email address. That's where you contact me and say, I want to be a friend of Tom. That's it. You'll be on the list. It's exciting stuff. 201-200-9368 is the phone number. We are heading into the third hour of the show in a few minutes. Tonight's show was like a sherbet. A palate cleanser, if you will. Teenage girl night was a little intense. We're kind of coming down from that. I just got an email from David, or Dave, saying he wants to have my baby. Well, Dave, I don't think that's possible. Hugh checking in. Saying your show is so darn exciting. We enjoy it a lot. Please make me a friend of Tom. Hugh, consider it done, Hugh. I should say you're listening to WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope Worldwide on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. My name is Tom Sharpling here with you on the best show on WFMU for another hour and two minutes. At 11 o'clock, we will be saying goodnight. But filling in for small chisange tonight. Jeffrey stepping in to do his thing at 11 p.m. So you can look forward to that. We're going to get to the music in a minute. I think we have a phone call coming in here. Uh, my good friend Dave. Call screener Dave. His name is not call screener Dave. It's Dave who happens to call screen for the show. FMU, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yes, hi. Hi. How you doing? Uh, I want to talk about the uh, judge and the prostitution. Okay. Hey, could you turn your radio down, please? Sure. Yeah, sure. Where where are you right now, if you don't mind me asking? I'm in a car, actually. Okay. Uh, all right, so the gentleman that called about the judge and the prostitution, Yeah. I believe that he was very falsely uh, advertising that, that little situation. Okay. How, how was that? I mean, he said that... He would get away with it, but any other average man won't. Uh-huh. I don't think that's true because I've gotten away with it. You've gotten away with prostitution? Yes. What What end of the deal were you on? I was on the buying deal. You were on the buying deal? I was on the buying deal, yes. So, uh, well, how long ago was this, if you don't mind oh, me asking? Oh, man, roughly... Eight months, maybe? Eight, nine months ago. So eight or nine months ago, you solicited a prostitute. Yes, I did. Where? No, where? Where? In I'm New York? I'm not embarrassed to say it. it was no, in I'm, New not, York I'm, not, I'm not judging you. I'm just asking. In New York? Yeah, it was in New York City. In uh, what area of the city? Midtown. Okay. Yeah. Over well, on usually the... you don't find them there because I actually, like I said, I'm not embarrassed to say, I actually search for them. Okay. And you really don't find them in Midtown. But I did find one. So how often do you seek the uh, the services of a uh, lady of the evening, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, wow. Well, 
average, on average, twice, three times a month. So pretty much almost once a week. Almost. Okay. W- once every nine days, I guess. Okay, probably. once every nine days. And uh, how long have you been doing this? Two years, two and a half years. And how, how did you get caught up in it? My wife, my wife and I uh, actually haven't been getting along too good for the past three, four years, and I don't find it cheating on her, so I'd go and seek other relations, we'll say. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, were you nervous the first time you did this? Extremely. Extremely, yes. But now I'm actually in full sack, so. Now when you got caught, yeah. How, how, did that, how did that go down when you got caught? Uh, it was actually that one time that I was talking about in Midtown, and uh-huh. there was an officer patrolling the street, found me inside the alley with this with, okay. lady, I guess we'll call her. Okay. And immediately ran up to us and pulled me to the side, pulled, uh, sent her off her way, which I found wrong because usually you're supposed to take her in also. Uh-huh. I would believe that's what has happened in the past with other cases, and pulled me over, cuffed me, and you know, told me the whole deal that it's illegal and I'm going to be charged for it. Blah blah blah. But how did he know it was prostitution? That you would? How did he know you just weren't uh, with your? He right, right away assumed it. I guess maybe because we were in an alley. Uh huh. I don't know. So did you? So maybe did, the way she was dressed. Maybe. Did you confess? I had to. Yeah. I couldn't hold it inside of me anymore. And how, how did your family find out about this? No, actually, nobody knows about this. Really? You managed to keep it quiet from your wife? I did. Really? How, yeah. how did you do that? I Letters mean, would come home in the mail, you know, come to court, and attorney this and attorney that, and I was always there to grab him before she was. Kind of like a little kid, you know, waiting for his report card. Uh huh. So his mom and dad wouldn't find it, you know kind of situation like that wow and i don't want to say i got away with it because you know i'm really not trying to hide it but But rather not her find out and what was the uh end result what was the the sentence well i'm actually uh close friends with a police chief in jersey city i'm not going to mention names yeah let's not mention names and he he sort of guided me through it and helped me out and told you how to, but are you, uh, are you just on probation now, or you... Uh, well, like I said, it was about two years ago, so everything's taken care of by now. Okay, I thought you said it was eight months ago. Eight months, no, oh, yeah, then eight months ago. Okay, so it's, uh, but it's all taken care of, it's in your... It's, it's all, in... we're all finished with that by now, yeah. Now, have you put that, have you, are you still soliciting prostitutes? It's in the closet. I can take it out when I want, I guess I could say. Uh-huh. And uh I mean I'm not using it at the moment. So you don't you don't worry though anymore. No, I don't worry. Actually me and my wife my wife and I, I should say are getting along for fairly well. So mm-hmm. like I said, it's it's kind of stashed away in the corner. Okay. Now Ready? would you would you be interested in uh Letting me tell your wife about your prostitution tonight. Uh, I'd rather not, you say. You wouldn't be, it would, uh, could I possibly tell uh, your family tonight on the radio mm. live? It would be good for the show. No, I'd rather not. I know it might not be the greatest thing for you personally. Exactly. So. But I think it would make great radio. So if I could just have the home phone number no, right it's, now. No, it's a personal issue, so I'd rather, like but, you said, it, was, it would affect me, so I'd rather not have it affect me and benefit for you. But look, we need to get these things over with, and if we can help someone else by getting them over with, all the better. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to help the show out. You, you, the hurt's going to come either way in your life, right? So if you can get, like, a little silver lining, right, and it's the show getting some good radio out of it, don't you think that that's a, that makes it worth it? That's uh, Yeah, for you, I guess. Shouldn't someone, but if you just go and tell your family and your wife, no one benefits that way. No one. But this way you get to turn your life into a carnival for the rest of us to listen in on. I don't really want to be in the middle of a circus. Haven't you ever wanted to run away and join the circus? Uh, People have told me I look like I belong in the circus, but... Well, now's your chance to be the ringmaster. 
Just give me the, the seven digits. You can do it. This is the moment. Change your life right now for the worse. Let's do it. Let's uh, submarine your entire existence. Just give me the phone number. Uh, I don't know. Uh, do I benefit out of this other than just getting it through to my family? You or get what? thrown out of the house. That's the benefit you get. So that's the benefit. The benefit you get is you get to uh, be put on display as a, uh, a public spectacle on the radio. You know as, what? as your family hears what you're going to do it, aren't you? You're kind of urging me on. I'm going to actually give you the number. All right, well, let's do it off the air. Why don't you? Can you call back? Call yeah, back. I can. Call back, Dave, and give him the number. All right, I'll call him back. All right, thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye. Exciting stuff. We are about to ruin a family tonight live on WFMU. You will hear the undoing of a relationship. A man confessing. His history of illicit affairs and his arrest for soliciting a prostitute live on the radio. Tonight's the night, friends. Tonight's also the night to hear some hot rock from Oneida on WFMU. Everybody. This is the best show in WFMU. My name is Tom Sharpling. We are in the home stretch of the program. There are there are 32 minutes to go. As we advance toward the home stretch. Remember earlier in the show, let me back announce the music real quick. Hey, we heard from from uh, Famon, F-A-M-A-N is the name of the band. Hurry, a band from Atlanta. One of the many great bands on the Psychedelic States compilation series, Georgia in the 60s. Before that, Dan Melkier's broke review Stopping by to give us war all the time is the name of that song. And boy, is that true, huh? War all the time. Ah, before that, the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones from their Beggar's Banquet album. We heard Salt of the Earth. And you know what? Someone wrote a phone number on the cover of this record in the middle of the graffiti on the, this is the graffiti men's room cover somebody actually wrote a phone number on it we're gonna call that number and find out whose number was written on the cover of the station's copy of beggars bank with neutral milk hotel before that their first seven inch reissued on CD by the people at orange twin records everything is the name of that song and starting us off, Oneida, Hot Rockin', the name of the album, Anthem of the Moon, and we heard Still Remembering, Hiding in the Stones, there from uh, Oneida, who will be playing a rockin' boat party soon 
from what I hear. I think it's this Sunday. It's out on the SS. Uh, it should be on the SS Oneida, which was uh, William Randolph Hearst's boat. Wouldn't that be poetic, huh? But it won't be. I'll find out about that show uh, and tell you all about it before I sign off. Hey, remember I asked uh, my audience, I said I had an argument with a friend of mine. Uh, we had a little wager going on. Who could, uh, whether or not my audience could tell me the best tennis video game for PlayStation. My friend said, ah, your audience don't know nothing about that. By the way, my friend is uh, Rudy from Survivor, if uh, I didn't make that clear. It's Rudy. Rudy Bosch. He said, ah, your audience don't know nothing about that. And uh, I said, yes, they do. So we have a bet, and uh, if I'm correct, I win $850,000 that my audience... Within the next 27 minutes can call up and tell me the best tennis video game for PlayStation. But if I lose this bet, if I don't get an, an answer, then I become my friend's indentured servant for 45 years. So help me out. 201-200-9368 is the number. I actually did get an email from Jason checking in. And here's his answer. He writes this to me. The very best tennis game for PlayStation or any other system is called something is something called actual reality. In actual reality, two humans pick up controllers called rackets. Rackets in quotes and appear in real time at an agreed location. Sometimes even with realistic features called sky and sun and fresh air. Your game-playing opponent should get off his arse and try it sometime. Yeah, you know what? I understand, Jason. You're you're making a point about exercise, but I was asking about the video game. Okay. I was. This was not a discussion of hey, is it better to play tennis or to play video game tennis? Which one's better for you? Everybody knows which one's better. What do you work at the, the, the President's Fitness Council? How dare you email me with this garbage? You should be ashamed of yourself. The phone number, 201-200-9368. WFMU, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on? Ah, not a whole lot. How are you tonight? I'm uh, pretty good. So, do you know the best tennis video game for PlayStation? I didn't even know PlayStation made a tennis video game. Well, I'm sure they do. Do they really? I'm sure they do. Can you name one? That's why I'm asking you, my friend. Oh, I don't know about tennis. I like FIFA. It's a soccer game. I sat in my house, my house for uh, nine hours straight one day playing it because I love it. Hey, did you hear about this uh, this new soccer game for uh, PlayStation or any other system? What? It's what called it? it's called Actual Reality. You should try it. In the in the game in the Actual Reality, you pick up a controller called a soccer ball, and you meet your opponent at an at a prearranged location. I'm just kidding. That's what some moron. <laughs> that's what some moron said to me. I seen this crazy thing at uh, this video game arcade in uh, East Brunswick Square Mall. These little kids were quacking around this soccer ball. It was crazy. Around what? Around the uh, uh, the soccer ball. It was like uh, an interactive game. Where you kick the? Oh, that's the one where you kick it. Yeah, they were quacking it around. I saw the greatest video game ever at uh, an arcade. Where like you get up on the thing and it's like a dance floor and you have oh. to you have to replicate the dance move that the uh, the guy on the screen does. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. I saw it on uh, the news the other day. It's may I was like, this is maybe the dumbest or greatest video game ever created. Yeah, the idea of, one. of watching some some arcade patron dancing now by himself facing a screen. Telling him how to dance. Uh, if that's your thing, you know, whatever. If that's your thing. <laughs> I know it's not your thing. You Definitely. know why? You know why I know it's not your thing? Why is that? Because you know what your thing is. What's that? Smoking weed. Smoking weed? Yeah. No, I'm not into that, man. 
Oh, you're not? No. I'm what on you... probation. Oh, okay. That's Well, that <laughs> makes it so much better. I have urine screening. What's that? I have urine screenings randomly. And, and how did that come about? Uh, uh, drinking and driving. Really? How long ago? Mm, last summer. Do you regret the drinking and driving? Well, mm, Or do you just regret getting caught? I regret getting caught. But you don't regret the danger that you put every other driver in by you drinking and driving? It wasn't enough to uh, really affect any other drivers. Who's your P.O.? Tell me who your P.O. is. Anil Kelly. i got to speak to him. It's a her. Her. i got to speak to her because you haven't learned your lesson yet. You know what I say? Oh. You need to get scared straight, my friend. Uh, I mean, the only thing was I got a disorderly conduct ticket with it, too, because I was urinating in public. Oh, that's great. So I, you, it was the triple crown pretty much for you actually, that night. Actually, it was, I got a reckless driving earlier in the night, and uh, I got pulled over by this cop in uh, Old Bridge, New Jersey. In and New Bridge? In Old Bridge. Okay. And then uh, later on that night, I went to the pool hall, and uh, me and my friends, we were drinking there and stuff. And I saw him later on at the 7-Eleven, because me and my friends went hold, to... Hold, hold on a second. You were in the pool hall? Yeah, the pool hall. Now, yeah. you went to the pool hall. Did you stop off at the time machine first? The time machine? Yeah. What the hell is that? It's like, the thing that sent you back into time when people went to pool halls. Oh. What the hell are you talking about? That's the only thing to do around here. The pool hall. The pool hall. What's wrong? You know. So let me get let me get your night. You uh, are you in school? Yeah. So you go to school. Afterwards, you go to the uh, drugstore and get a, uh, a malted with your friends, right? <laughs> then you go. Then maybe you have an after school job uh, delivering ice to people's houses. Ice. And then, and then you go uh, to the pizza parlor, right? Maybe yeah. get it a pizza pie. And then you go to the pool hall. Yeah, that's what I like to do. You know where you should try going? Where? A juke joint. Have you ever been to a juke joint? No, and what the hell is that? Oh, they got dancing and uh, roughhousing. You rough should check housing? it out. So anyway, tell me about this. Uh, so, so you <laughs> you got a, you got pulled over for reckless uh, driving. Yeah. And then you went to the pool hall. The pool hall, yeah. And then you kept drinking, right? Yeah. And then you got pulled over later that night for Drinking and well, driving? No, I didn't get pulled over later on. I saw the same officer that pulled me over for reckless driving in the 7-Eleven parking lot. And uh, he said, you know, what are you doing here? And I said, uh, I'm getting a bite to eat with my friends. And uh, he said, oh, he's like, why is, your, why is your friend driving your car? And I said, you know, I've been drinking a little. I was being honest with him. And he said, oh, okay. So he pulls away into the parking lot across the street, and I didn't see where he went. So I had to piss really bad. So I started uh, peeing on the fence right next to the 7-Eleven, mm -hmm. and uh, he kind of flashed lights on me and pulled in, and uh, he searched my car again, found an empty bottle of Jack Daniels and uh, a bunch of uh, empty alcohol containers. So since it was your car, though, yeah, you got the... Uh... Yeah. Well, you know, you <laughs> live and learn, my friend. You need to get... How, or how old are you? I'm 19. And you, what, are you still in high school? Uh, no. How, how did you manu How did you pull that one off? Pull what off? Graduating high school. Uh, I don't know. I have you, no clue. You need to shape up, my friend. <laughs> what are you in? What grade are you in? How old are you? Old enough to know. Old enough to know. Well, how old do you think I am? I have no clue. Take a guess. Uh, I have no. I'm young enough to not care. <laughs> Okay, I'll take that. I earned that one. Okay? You got me on that one. All well, right. Thanks for calling. No problem. Lay off the hooch, though. Come on, seriously. What's that? Lay off the hooch. All right. Lay off the the uh, the uh, schmoky schmoky. The hooch? What the hell time machine have you been freaking driving in? Yours. Mine? Yes, I borrowed it the other day. All right, we'll go for a ride sometime, buddy. Thanks a lot, guy. All right, All right bye. <laughs> If there are any teens listening, do not behave like that young man. <laughs> WFMU, you're on the air. Yeah, I, hey, uh, my name is John. Uh, how and, are you uh, doing? I work at uh, EA, EA Sports. Really? Yeah. Are you honest about that? Yeah. Shut that door, man, because I got an echo going. Now, let me guess. You work at, let me quiz you to make yeah. sure you work at EA Sports. Okay. What, what is your slogan? <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to get this one. Hold on a second. Wait, let me look on my badge. It says, uh, it's in the game. That is incorrect.
<laughs> you know what your slogan is? What is I'm going to send Tom free tennis games. You know what? If we make a tennis game, I'm going to send you a hundred of them. Oh, why nobody wants it? There isn't a tennis game. There isn't? No. There's no such tennis game for PlayStation. Do you know they had a game It was called Pong? Yeah, I remember Pong. That's the extent of the excitement of what a tennis game would be. What would you describe, uh, what do you call All-Star Tennis 99 then, made by the... Maybe I should be talking to somebody over at UBI. <laughs> maybe they know a little better. Well, oh, let me if get anybody else from... knew about who UBI was, maybe we'd all, you know, we'd yeah. all agree. We all would know the answer to this. Hey, is somebody, if somebody from Blue Bite listening, I'd like to talk to them, or maybe somebody from Namco. Namco, or... what's their title called? Smash Court Tennis. Smash Court Tennis. Can Smash. you play doubles? I don't care. I'm playing it by myself. <laughs> How about six on six tennis? Now that would be I'd be interested in. How about A rumble tennis? Anybody from Agitech listening? Can you can you hit each other with the rackets? That would be fun. I'd pay for that. So what do you do at EA? <laughs> what do I do? You, you, is this a serious question? Yeah, I, so, yeah I'm a creative so, director over there. Really? Yeah. So are you a big shot there? Uh, big shot? I don't yeah. think we have any big shots. You get me some free games? <laughs> Can you get me some review copies? Seriously. I could get you, uh... If I was to, like, review video games for PlayStation. I, I highly recommend a game called Majestic. Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. Yeah. I, ha I don't have it, though. Yeah, hint, that's, that's hint, the hint. game that I, that hint, I, I built. Hint, hint. Yeah, that's the good hint, one. Hint, <laughs> hint. Hint, I didn't realize hint. I was going to be here plugging my game. This is great. Hint, hint. Oh, you got to send me some free games, though. I'll send you a free copy of Majestic. How's that? That just sounds great. Yeah, I can do that. That I can do. Okay, so you're going to send me a free copy. Is Are you going to send it, like, glued inside a PlayStation 2? It doesn't like play on a PlayStation 2. It's only a PlayStation game? No, it's a, it's an online uh, online PC game. All right, send it along. I'd love to try it. I thought you knew about this. Is that the one where... Uh... It calls you on the phone. Oh, and that's the one where... It faxes like... and emails. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the, the one. one. Oh, I want to do that. It's fun. That's the one that was reviewed in Entertainment Weekly this that, past oh, week. Oh, well, yeah, he didn't do such a great uh, review. Of well, him. I'll give my own review, and you know what? Mine will be completely biased because I got it for free. <laughs> you got it. I didn't get it yet, though. <laughs> you will get it, I promise oh. you. You know what? I actually cannot accept it, though. Are you really? Because this is a non-profit station. But oh. you can send it to... Uh, well, actually, if you go on, if you go can. there right now to ea.com, you can play the first uh, the first three days for free. I actually cannot accept it. Okay. Honestly, I can't. All right. Well, then I won't send it to you. What you? Oh, you got to send it to me though. Well, you, you can't send it accept to Dave. it. Send it to Dave. <laughs> to who? Dave, uh, my uh, my cohort. Oh, so he can my accept associate. it. He can accept it. Yes. It'll be my gift to him. All right. Well, I have to get all that info, I guess. Well, do you have my info? No, I need all that info. Just email thomas at wfmu.org, okay. and I'm going to just get it. I'll give it as like a little present to, to Dave or maybe even one of my listeners. Okay, yeah. But I can't accept it. You can't accept it. No. But you could review it. I could review it, but I cannot accept it. So you could say you bought it. No, I can't. And then I, you could review it. I, I'll review it, but I will not accept it. I understand. Okay. Oh, and and you know what? I won't non, send it to you. You won't send it? But I will. Send, but but I'll won't. send it to Dave. You send it to Dave. Right. I'll watch him play it. Right. That's right. Okay. You watch over his shoulder. But I cannot accept it. I understand. All right? Yeah. Thanks a lot, guy. My pleasure. Got to get that tennis. Look into a tennis game. Listen, tennis, it's Pong. What's the point? All-Star Tennis 99 didn't stop the people from UBI Software. What, is, what did they sell? 20,000? I don't care. I want them to sell one. <laughs> They, they, I'm not buying a whole run of it. I you know what? You might. You got me thinking now. Maybe I'll have to go and talk to somebody at EA Sports. Maybe we need a tennis game. It's not. Oh, well, you say it's in the game, but then what do you do? Oh, we, well, we don't have tennis. I don't know. Maybe we need to do a tennis game. Maybe hey. this is a whole. Maybe they'll give me a promotion now. Now, do you guys do NBA Live? Is that you guys? We do. We do the NBA and we do the NBA Street. NBA we do Street. Madden. We do FIFA. But you're not NBA Live. 2000 NBA Live yes, 99. We're, we're NBA Live, right? I want to tip my hat to you for NBA Live. We have the best sports games. I mean, you know why? No, because you're in the game. <laughs> That's right, because it's in the game. It's in the game, and That's you're right. it. Well, that's what they tell us, and we're supposed to believe it. What's the worst game you've ever been involved with up there? 
I can't say. You can say. Come on. I I I I can't I can't. You can tell me. Come on. What's the worst game you've ever? Uh... The worst game I ever played. I could tell you. <laughs> what's the worst? Are you? What's the what? What did one of your colleagues propose? What's the worst thing you've ever heard suggested as a possible game? You're trying to get me fired now. No, no. Well, like, what's something you heard somebody like in a blue sky when you guys are blue skying, right? You're just throwing ideas around. What's right. the what's like the dumbest thing one of your compatriots ever said as a game idea? I think they rec they said tennis. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're doing me wrong here, guy. You're so I got me? I got to say the tennis thing just uh, it eludes me I don't I don't see where where it's going, but I, I I don't know I can't I can't answer that question. Daddy needs a tennis game for his PlayStation. <laughs> PlayStation right. Two. I don't have PlayStation Two yet. You got to get PlayStation Two. My mommy won't let me buy one. You know why? Why? PlayStation Two. PlayStation. ColecoVision's coming back. Xbox. Yeah. You guys Atari's got right around the corner. 2600 coming back. <laughs> 5200, you better get ready. They're coming back. Yeah, dust off the old uh, floppies. In, in television, here it comes. <laughs> get hey, the Amiga out of the box. Hey, do you make that FIFA soccer game for the Vic 20? For what platform? The Vic 20. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It was the Texas Instruments big uh, Oh no, we don't, you know, we stopped doing that. <laughs> Okay. Hey, well, thanks a lot, and uh, I appreciate you calling. Hey, it was a pleasure. Okay. Take care. Right, bye. Wow, a real video game uh, programmer. FMU, you're on the air. Hello, Tom. How are you this evening? This is a Mr. Vanilla Hotbox Grits. Oh, I'm all right. How are you tonight? We uh, haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, I'm doing very good, actually. Well, I don't know. We'll get that in a second. But how, are you doing okay this evening? Uh-huh. Your yeah, listeners I'm, are doing okay? I'm okay, yeah. Great. Well, I was just listening to your show. I'm up here in the New York area. Okay. And I'm recording a um, record with, uh, I'm in the studio with Ranking Roger. Oh, the guy from uh, from uh, General Public. Or something. And English Beat. Yes. And so we, have a, we have a new studio studio project called Instant Corn Dog that we are uh, putting together. So that's like a side project from your normal vanilla uh, yes, hotbox? Yes, Well, actually, I, mean, I, I noticed that Mr. Tamblin called in early, and as you know, he is my manager now. Yes, Roger Tamblin. Right. He has me uh, doing this. He has me shuffling all over the country, basically. And I, I just kind of, I, I know he, he claimed to, to treat his, his performers very well and to, you know, shower them with, with you know, amenities, but I think that his... His tour support and managerial support is a little bit dubious. Really? In what yes. way? Yes. Well, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to clear the air a little bit. I mean, he, he I, I didn't necessarily get a, a monetary a monetary advance to, to live on. Uh, he actually uh, he gave me a, a 1987 Hyundai Excel. Okay, as as what? As part of my advance, and then the uh, rest of what he gave me was just kind of like a, a care package or something. Uh, he gave me like, you know, a videotape of Alan Smithy's uh, Shrimp on the Bobby. Okay. Uh, excellent movie. I know Mr. Taylor's had some dealings recently with with some uh, some uh, the Australian entertainers, which has actually led to, you know kind of a flare in my love life as I have recently started to uh, to date the lead singer of Frente. Really? Yes. Wow, so that, you you were actually becoming part of that Australian scene that uh, Roger Tamblin was talking about. Yes, well, it has had a, his dealings in it has had effect on my career and my love life. Well, but, how has it affected your career, though? Well, I basically just well, uh, because part of my advance was Alan Smithy's Shrimp on the Bob. Oh, okay, time. okay. So it's affected it in the fact that you're getting things that are rather yeah, than I mean, receiving money. Well, I, my poor diem is a little questionable. He basically gives me to, to live on every day. I get $40 and a stack of Red Lobster coupons. And and you get I, this as your... Basically, I, I, guess I, I guess I eat free wherever there's a Red Lobster. Okay, well, that, that's not the worst thing in the world. No. I guess not. Uh, you know, well, I, I... I guess I could trade this car in for some money or something. 
some to get some get some studio time. Well, is it in good shape? Uh, the well, car? it has about two hundred and forty thousand miles on it. Oh, I, I guess that that is no. It's not in good shape. That's a that's a no. Well, well, you know. So so you're in this area. Are you I'm in the New York area, yes. I'm at my new studio project, Instant Corn Dog, that I am uh, I have with uh, Ranking Roger. Which is, which uh, is actually that that whole setup was uh, Mr. Tamblin's idea. Okay, so the two of you are making music. Today. Are you doing an album together? Uh, yes, we're going to do an album under the moniker Instant Corn Dog. And when when can we look for that? Uh, it'll be uh, basically spring of 2003. Okay. Wow, so that's a ways away then. Uh, yes, Miss Tamla said that'd be fine though. Okay, now how about the uh, like vanilla hotbox grits? Can we look for a album from from you? I'm still working on it. As, again, it's hard for me to get any uh, studio time or any money when you know when I get a, a used import car as my advance from my manager. Yeah, so th that's uh. Well, that's not fair. That's something you obviously have to work out with him. It uh, looks like we're going. Yeah, I, I don't know. But I want everybody to be on the lookout for me now. So, how are you doing with the uh, band guitar? Still smoking. Still smoking with the band guitar. Still smoking. I'm the, high, the world's hottest band guitar player. I may even, may even eclipse my, my mentor, Mr. Baylor Fleck. Well, I, well, I of course studied under and wrote it for. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, those are those are pretty big shoes to uh, fill. But I'm sure if anybody can do it, it would it would maybe be you. I'm still looking to hear some of the music, though. I was hoping I will to get some to you. Okay, because we'd love to get the album up here or anything you've. You I know. will get some to you, but I just kind of want to clear the air with you know these his managerial practices of Mr. Tamlin because he he says he's you know. Put, put me in the cat bud seat, and that's not really the case. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure you'll end up. Uh, you got to let the cards play, maybe you know, play, let, you know, because you're still starting out. So I'm real sick of Red Lobster. I'm, I'm sure you could get sick of it. I could definitely see that, but you know, let let the things, uh, you know, play out. You know, you're you're still an up and comer. That's true. That's so true. well, I will keep you and your listeners posted on my progress. Well, okay, this is great. So everybody can look for uh, Vanilla Hotbox Grits, maybe, That's too. That's right. Vanilla Hotbox Grits coming your way. I am the world's hottest band guitar player. All right. So uh, if... I'm Mr. Fleck, of course. Okay, well, goodbye now, Tom, and you have a nice evening. Well, thank you, Mr. Grits. All right, bye-bye right, now. 201-200-9368 is the number only. Seven minutes left in the program. We're in the home stretch. Get ready for Jeffrey stepping in, filling in for Mr. Uh, Small Chisange. Ah, oh, now the guy who wrote that uh, sarcastic email to me about the air and the sky and the tennis is going to play actual reality. He writes back when I, I called him a moron, I guess. Now, now, name calling is beneath you, or maybe not. Perhaps 45 years of indentured servitude would change your tune, or not. To that effect, Magui Cerna's Tennis Mania is the best PlayStation tennis game. P.S. Indentured servitude is specifically abolished by the United States Constitution. And then he calls me a twit. Now, is that... Hey, Jason? I'm not the twit. You're the twit. How dare you call me a twit? I shan't stand for that. Now oh, we had another email here. I wanted to read uh, Michael, another Michael checking in, saying that although I think it was a good idea to change your fan club's name to Friends of Tom, we could occasionally transform it into Tom's Army, or Sharpling's Army, to battle the Parrot Heads. I hate the Parrot Heads, too. Also, think about doing your show in the second person plural, which would be you all. Thank you, Michael. It shall be considered whether I should do my show in the second person plural, if I should do it for you all. How's that? 
That's a little thrill for you. Oh, what else is going on tonight? Oh, we're at the five-minute mark. It's getting closer. Dave is screening a call. We'll see if it's fit for for air. Oh, it is. Let's see what happens. It's exciting every time we put down the uh, old uh, the 14 buttons that we have to press to put a call on the air. Hey, WFMU, you're on the air. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment uh, about what I heard before. There's a gentleman talking about prostitution. Uh huh. Prostitution in Midtown. Okay. Um, I'm a married man myself for just two years now, and um, I'm disgusted. You're disgusted by his. Uh... Yeah, the way he couldn't even uh, he couldn't work his problems out, and he went he he went to prostitution. What do you, I mean, Tom? Come on. Now, have you ever solicited a pro solicited a prostitute, my friend? Never. You haven't. Never. This is absolutely absurd. That's disgusting. So you condemn that man? Do you not agree with me, or? I, I look. I more moral. I have never solicited a prostitute. Okay. Right. Because I, I uh, solicit is such a an ugly word. No, I'm just kidding. I never actually. So. Uh, so it, you have been married two years. What about this guy if he's having a hellish marriage, though? What if this guy's just uh There's many other ways to go about working that, that kind of stuff out. How would you suggest? I have encountered that? probably as many problems as he had, being that I'm only married two years. I don't know if he mentioned uh, the length of his marriage mm -hmm. as, well, as of yet, but... How would you suggest? There's you just you talk it out with your wife. I mean, especially when there's kids involved, mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't resort to things like that. That's just... I agree. I agree with you. I just had to get my opinion out there because that. Whew. Now, is your wife around? She's not. She's I'm not? home alone, actually. Really? She works nights, yes. She works nights. Where, and what do you do? You work days? Yeah. What does you What do you do for a living? I'm actually a postal worker. Are you all nervous about the about the thrax? Oh yeah. Speaking of the anthrax. Uh, yeah. I wrote a letter to the. Uh, Congressman Frank Pallone about that. About uh, we had a meeting, work at Kilmer, the Kilmer Post Office in Edison. Okay. It's just disgusting. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm scared for my life actually. And uh, who knows if you write letters to your congressman if they're actually really going to write back. You know what I'm saying? Or if mm -hmm. anything's going to happen. But yeah, it's 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 a frightening situation there. Yeah. Well, I I uh, I feel for you, my friend. Huh. And I would, you know, I. Uh... I mean, by me feeling for you, it doesn't mean I'm soliciting you for uh, any illicit activity, though. What does that mean? Because you and I were both against prostitution. Well, I would hope so. I'm not so. I'm just meaning I'm not soliciting you by saying one. <laughs> Who's that laughing? Hey, you hung up on me, you creep! How dare you? What record are we playing, Jeff? Do you need to cue it? Do you need me to shut up for a minute? Okay. The show is two minutes away from ending. And that maybe is not the worst thing in the world, but... Nickel and Dime Radio, hosted by Jeff tonight. Jeffrey. Will be a good thing. It's trade-offs. That's what everything's all about. Hey, Michael checking in here saying, Hey, Tom, there are no good tennis games for PlayStation. I've only played one, and it was pretty okay. Smash Court Tennis is what he says. The best tennis games recently out now, I think, are Virtua Tennis for Dreamcast or Mario Tennis for Nintendo 64 and an oldie for Super Nintendo thing. Well, thank you, Michael. I think because of you, Michael, I will be $850,000 richer come today and this guy Jason just emailed me and said he says he's not a twit he says I'm a twit he says do you know what a twit is it's a twerp in training you know what Jason you're the twit and the twerp someday you'll grow up and be a twerp most likely you know what you are though you're a dink 
How's that? Try that one on for size, my friend. And that's the last thing I've got to say tonight. Hey, everybody, it's been fantastic being here for three hours. I'll be back next week from 8 until 11. This is the best show on WFMU each and every Tuesday night from 8 until 11. My name's Tom Sharpling saying good night. You are listening to WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope Worldwide on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. Please stay tuned to Nickel and Dime Radio with special guest host Jeffrey filling in for small change tonight. Thank you and good night.